tip one, better selections in the DaVinci timeline. Down the left hand side here, you can see that we've got the option to lock the tracks. Now, if we press each one, we can lock them individually. But what if we wanna make a change to every one of these at once? Well, we simply have to hold down the shift key, select one of them, and it's gonna lock the entire amount or unlock them as the case may be. Now, if you happen to have, let's just say two of these that are locked and I hold down shift and choose to unlock, it's gonna unlock everything. But what if I have the opposite problem? I want to lock a track, I'll hold down shift again and it's gonna lock everything. So that's the shift key. But if we hold down the alt key, it's gonna do the reverse to everything else. So in this case, we've got the unlock track here, which is locked. If I hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and I click that, you can see all of the other tracks go to locked, but the one that we clicked on is unlocked. And if I click that again, it'll reverse that so that everyone else is unlocked and this one is locked. Now, same sort of thing. Let's just drop a couple of colors here onto different tracks. And if I choose to disable a track, I could just hold down the Alt key. I'll look, do it for this one here on track two. Let's just hit disable. And obviously it just disables that one. But if I hold down the Alt key and click the same thing, it's gonna invert that and disable the other tracks. So remember the Shift key is gonna turn everything on or off. The Alt key is going to invert the selection. Tip two. If you ever see this little line here on your DaVinci timeline, that's simply an in and out point. So to add our own, we'll simply hit the letter I. We can place our track head here in a different spot. We can hit O and that creates one of our own length. Now, if I wanna loop between this in and out point, I'll need to turn on looping here by clicking the little looping icon and then just hit Alt and the slash key. That's the one next to the right shift on your keyboard. And you can see that video now looping between our selections. Again, to remove this, Alt and the letter X. Tip three. When you wanna add effects like a transform to a clip, we'll typically do that in the edit page. So we'll drag and drop that onto our clip. We'll change our zoom, for example, in this case. But did you know you can do this from the color page? Simply go to the color page. We're gonna add in a new node. Over here on the right, we're gonna locate in our effects transform. We'll drag and drop that onto our clip. And we have those same effects available right here. When playing back some of our clips, up the top here, you can see I'm currently running at 25 frames per second, which is great with no drop frames. But often when you're dealing with some complex layouts, you're gonna get frames that drop, this button will go red and everything's all jittery. Now, often we resort to drastic measures. We close DaVinci, we open it up again, and hopefully that fixes the problem. But one thing that I have found, if we come back to the playback menu and go to timeline proxy resolution, we can temporarily set that to quarter, then we'll come back and we'll change it again back to full, and often that fixes the problem. Now, similar to the previous tip, if you are playing back some footage in Fusion and your footage is stuttering, you can fix that by simply right-clicking here. We can turn off high quality, we can turn off motion blur, and often that's gonna fix the problem. Then when you're done, simply turn it back on again. You can easily add light rays to your footage. Inside DaVinci Resolve, we're gonna to go to Open FX. We can search for light rays. We're gonna go and add that to our clip. Over here in the inspector on the effects tab, we can choose things like the threshold, the length of the rays. We can soften them, even change the colors. I hope some of those tips helped you. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.